The brother says, my subject is the bullet or the bullet. And if it comes to that, it's already past that. But if it comes to that, he says, where are we going to get bullets? He said, we don't manufacture no bullets. Where are we going to get bullets? My brother, I respect your question. But I must say to you, when I hear a question like that, it is a question that is from a position of lack of confidence. It is almost from a position of weakness. It is true, the white man makes the guns and he makes the bullets. And it is equally as true that my subject, the bullet or the bullet, didn't just deal with a physical bullet but it dealt with standing up fighting on all fronts as I said and not depending so much on the old things that have already failed us so the bullet or the bullet in one sense was a metaphor but in another sense it was literal we can always get bullets brother we can always get guns even if it's from the body of our enemy there's so many guns, I don't have to go out and tell black people to arm themselves. Black people are already armed. I just get sick of these Negroes, Reverend James Bevel, and some of these other Negroes running around the country talking about turning your gun for a Bible or a Holy Quran. Now what young brothers are going to come in and give their gun up for a Holy Quran? Or give their gun up for a Bible? Some of these other sick Negroes telling black people to turn in their guns for some Power Ranger tickets. Turn in your guns so you can go see the Knicks play. Are you serious? I don't have to tell black people to arm themselves. The black people's nature and the God of nature. And the first law of nature dealing with self-defense and self-preservation under these conditions will dictate to you what is necessary. But let's go even further. It is not the gun in and of itself that wins the war. The French white man, the British white man, and the American white man fought the Viet Cong. Little people, some up not even five feet tall. Huh? They didn't have any great airplanes, great tanks, great jets, great bullets, great guns and artillery. But they had the determination to be free. And so when the French white man went in with all of his armory and his guns and his manufacturing of all of that, they beat the hell out of the French white man and drove him out in shame and disgrace. When the English white man went in, they beat the hell out of him and drove him out in disgrace. And when the American white man went in, he tried to bomb them back into the Stone Age. And so they built underground cities underground tunnels he dropped tons and tons of napalm and bombs on them on a daily and a nightly and a consistent basis and they built underground cities they got off the top of the ground and went underground they had a determination to be free they cut crackers throats with the metal from crashed airplanes they took the cracker's own weapons and killed him with his own weapon the way David took Goliath's sword and cut Goliath's head off with his own sword. They terrorized crackers. They had crackers scared to death. They built and made all kinds of traps and contraptions that created psychological fear and terror in the mind of the cracker. This cracker is a punk. This cracker is a sissy. This cracker bombs black churches and kills black babies and attacks unarmed, handcuffed black men and women. What would this cracker do if you stood up and fucked this cracker 
If you stood up and fought this cracker, yes, we'll lose some lives. Damn it, I might be the first to die, but so what? It's the price of freedom. You just want to quote freedom. You just want to talk revolution. But you don't want to walk the walk when it's time to walk the walk. Look at it. Amilcar Gabral in Guinea-Bissau. They didn't. He said, well, our people don't have the weapons of the, uh, of, of the European oppressor. He said, but our will and our determination to be free will make us free. And so they fought the crack of the European. And Amilcar Gabral was able to gain freedom and independence in Guinea-Bissau. Read Franz Fanon's Wretched of the Earth. Read of revolutionary struggle all over the earth. Read Osage for Kwame Nkrumah's revolutionary warfare. Read, study other wars. I hate to hear a black man say, well, but we outnumbered. He got more guns than we got. Oh, black woman, you in trouble when you got a black man talking like that. You mean to tell me that your woman is in a house being raped by 20 men and they got 20 guns and you ain't got but one gun and you go just go and cry and leave her in there being abused and misused and say, they got more guns than I got. I can't go in there. If you got a man like that, God damn it, you ain't got no man. You might as well get rid of him. You ain't got no man. A real man has got to face it. A real man has got to determine the strategy for going in there and getting his woman out and taking some of the enemy out. That's a real man. And if it comes down to it, a real man is willing to give his life for his women and his children and his people and his nation. If necessary, a real man, if it comes down to it and he can't get her out, the nature of revolution a real man is willing to blow up the whole goddamn house you say you got her I love her but all of you will die you won't do another black woman like that it's a price for revolution what will you do to be free that's the question Malcolm used to say you want to know when you'll get free he said you'll get free when you let your enemy know that you're willing to do anything to be willing to do anything to be free.